I think you people are fucking weird. <laughs> I think it's really good. That's what I like, and I also think it's weird. <laughs> you people don't mess up weird people. No, it's fascinating. It's true. I mean, I've done a couple of comedian movies, and they're two of the most fucked up dark movies I've done. They're really messed up weird characters, and I, I, there's something really dark, and I, I like that, actually. There's actually something... When you guys drop the whole nice thing that you do really well, you're all really dark and weird. And I, I'm not serious, I like that. Really? <laughs> what was the other movie? I'm just curious. Just how I'm gonna have this conversation. I did a, I did a, I did a movie called Barney's version. But, uh, <laughs> but that's a really dark character in that thing. So, yeah. Rob? <laughs> um, I don't really like it anymore. <laughs> that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, well. Canadians vary. <laughs> the, you know, there's the East Coast and the West Coast Canadians. They have a very different opinion. Kind of thing, but, uh, I don't necessarily know if I want to reveal it. <laughs> but, um, but I really liked working in Toronto. I like Torontonians. Canadian narcissism. Um, um, question for the actors, um, and of course kudos to Juliet, who's not here, and Jay, who are brilliant in the film and led by the illustrious David Cronenberg. Um, a question, I, I don't know, um, Robert and uh, Paul, that last scene, and up again, the giant, you know, we touched on Barney's version in the last question, but here's, you know, one of our most brilliant actress Paul Giamatti, I, I think we all love. Um, what was that? <laughs> 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 we love you too, Robert, but come on. I think just to have a bit of a conversation about that last scene, which is kind of that ending on that final note and, and the intensity uh, as the actors and, and the story and coming together and the challenge anyone to take the mic and, and talk a bit about the story ending and the film on that final note. Anyone, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, anyone who wasn't killed up to this point, I don't know. Kevin? <laughs> It was an intense, an intense I mean, the best piece of direction that David gave me the whole time, and one thing he said to me was, this is the climax of the movie, so don't screw it up, or you're going to ruin the whole movie. That's literally, that was it. No, but seriously, that, that for me was the most intense thing about it, just acting-wise, was that I know if, if this is how the thing has got to end, so, you know, trying to get a build through that whole thing, and shooting it was very tricky and difficult. Um, Story wise, I don't know. If it's, a, it's an enigmatic baffling scene. I don't know. Um, but I guess as Paul, you know, with sorry, Paul and uh, Robert sitting there with Paul in this heavy scene and the responsibility of closing that, how are you feeling? And it's all coming together. It's intense. It was nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was hard. It was. It was definitely one of the harder things I've done. So, I mean, but I, we had a good time, and the fact that we were actually laughing a lot while we were shooting it, Rob and I could crack each other up, because it, fortunately it's kind of crazy and absurd, too, but I don't know, it, it, it was a very intense thing to do, I've never done anything quite like it. Um, I'm not really helping. Robert! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My doors were not right. I, I just had a lot of fun, actually. You know, I knew I had the two right guys to do the scene. We had a wonderful production designer who gave us great space, a great texture to play with, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. I mean, we, we had six days 
ordered to for a shooting record. We finished at three. And and literally uh, I think almost every shot was one or two takes, that was it, including the last long shot, which ends the movie. That was one take. So um uh, okay. 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 However difficult it was, the, the, uh, we were on a roll and we, we seemed to know what we were doing. And it, so it was, it was actually fun. It was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. One last question and then over here. Very brief. Uh, Mr. Cronenberg, what, what, about 60 or 70% of the movie taking place in the car. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you as a director to have so much of the movie in one scene? Well, um, it, it's interesting. I heard Paul just recently say he likes acting in small, confined spaces. <laughs> and, uh, actually, I like directing in those as well. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I noticed this when I did The Fly, because it's basically that movie's three people in a room, basically. So, um, I liked, it wasn't, it wasn't so much a challenge as a kind of joy and a lot of fun to, sh to create this number. It was a set, obviously. Uh, they came apart in 24 pieces, like a kind of Lego car. You could split it so, you know, down the middle or in half and all that, so that we could light it and shoot it from different angles and uh, put it in New York City uh, later, you know, through the wind, wind drivers. Um, but, um, so it, it, it just induces, I think it immediately gives you that uh, an intensity uh, and a focus that you wouldn't have in wider spaces. I don't think I could ever do a Western, you know, it's too, too much space. And, uh, and, and, uh, and it really, I, I gave my crew uh, two movies to look at. One was called Lebanon, which is a movie that takes place entirely inside an Israeli tank. And the other one was Das Boat, which takes place entirely in a submarine. And I thought, this, you know, gives you an idea of what you can do, what interesting things you can do visually and dramatically in a, in a very confined space. And it makes you really, you know, when Juliet got in there, I said, no, just use the space. She really went, you did, you know? So, um, uh, and then used it in a way that the other actors didn't. They used it in a different way. So it was, uh, uh, it, it, it was part of what really excited me about the movie was the rigorousness and the aesthetic uh, element of a limo traveling along one street from one end of Manhattan to the other for a very simple reason that, that turns out not to be very simple. So, that's my answer. So. I want to remind everyone that Cosmopolis opens this Friday, June 8th. Tell everyone you know to go see it. And I want to thank you all for coming.